All right, so I have quite the list to get through for this uh, second maintenance video. The uh, supercharger belts, I'm gonna wrap an extra one around the, uh, the pump shaft bearing, just in case something bad happens. Gotta replace the pump shaft bearing itself, the tensioner bearing, rewire the buttons, install the new engine hatch hinge, uh, build the new fuse panel with the, uh, the relays in it, relocate the battery, distribution block, and switch panel, build a drain plug, and wrap the dash. Obviously, I don't have the uh, the supercharger belts here or any of the bearings, so that'll be last. So I'll get started on rewiring the buttons. Because uh, watching people rewire things is not enjoyable, I'll kind of omit a good part of that. But uh, yeah, just gotta sift through this cluster of nonsense as well as my other uh, electrical pieces and cobble something together that looks good. Get started on that now. Okay, so fast forward a couple days. I have uh, I have my relay and fuse panel built. Got all my uh, you know all my 40 amp relays ready, and the various switching loads fuses built into it. Uh, the ground, the uh, the triggers, the supply, and the load. So that looks pretty decent. A lot better than it used to. So, all this stuff was found on Amazon for relatively cheap. Like this thing was like 20 bucks. You just had to assemble it and build all the wiring underneath it, which you can't really see that because I already sealed it up, but uh, not too bad. Uh, what I did for the new wiring setup is I used actual seven pin trailer wiring because it's double insulated and the wires actually twist through here to negate the EMI that's created whenever, you know, wires are passing voltage right next to each other, they create a, uh, an electromagnetic field. So it's, uh, it's just there to negate that. Okay, the, uh, it's about four hours later, the whole, uh, the whole panel and switch block and distribution block, all the connections are made. And uh, it's the way it should have been the, the first go around. So uh, essentially, I already know that I'm gonna change this to a 555 timer for like 30 minutes so that if I do turn on the system, I can't walk away and forget about it. Because if, uh, if, if I have the 555 timer, it'll just shut it off after 30 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever I set it for. But the idea is this is up in the dash and then whenever I turn that on, uh, it turns everything else on and uh, then you have individual switches for accessories. So like this one would be the blower, which I have this server fan right here. So whenever I click this on, it is blowing. So, yep, turned out pretty nice. Yeah, so uh, whenever this is clicked, this is the trigger for this relay right here, the number one position. Number one position relays voltage from these blocks here and uh, to one of the, the loads. So, all right, I'm gonna get this installed in the boat and then go on to the next task. All right, so I have the, uh, the fuse panel installed, or not installed, but where it's gonna be. And this is where I'm gonna stick the uh, little distribution panel right below it. I just have to build a standoff that I can tap and uh, weld to this little flat stock right here. So. Should look pretty good and then do my wire management so that all this looks like a third grader didn't do it. So just gotta figure out how to make that all work. And I got the, the harness ran on the opposite side of the boat so that there's no crosstalk or uh, EMI for flicker and LEDs. And I got it kind of in its rough location. So the length works perfectly. I'm just gonna tuck it up under here with some tabs and call it a day. All right, I'm gonna get that installed.
All right, that is looking fresh. Those two things are installed. I got the, uh, the little hooks so that I can keep everything nice and tidy welded in. It's routed up to the front. As you can see, the switch panel's right there. And uh, yeah, that's how it's gonna look. These two connections are gonna go to my accessory battery that's gonna sit right here. And then there's gonna be a battery isolator that uh, disconnects the two so that if I leave my accessories on, it can't you know, leave me stranded. But yeah, that looks pretty nice. It seems that I used every single tool that I own to uh, install these two things, but I don't know how all of these are out, but uh, all right, I'm going to get started on mounting that the switch panel, and then I'm going to get started on the battery relocation. What are you doing? You come here. You come here. All right, now I'm gonna work on mounting the switch panel in the dash. Okay, so I have decided not to relocate the battery. As uh, thinking through this, I kind of like where the uh, the extra 40 pounds is in relation to all the weight in the boat. So it's just gonna stay right back here and then I'm just gonna run uh, a positive and a negative up to this distribution block. And then between this battery, the accessory battery and the uh, AGM battery for the, uh, the motor, I'm just gonna have a battery isolator with Bluetooth or something to notify me if it's freaking out. But the switch panel is done. The, uh, all the wiring's done. The fuse and relay panel's done. The distribution block is done. I just have to extend those wires, which that's not a big deal. I just gotta buy those. So might as well mark this stuff off the list, which is that. Fuse panel, battery relocate, distribution block, switch panel. So I'm not gonna wrap the dash until I have the radio and drain plug will be last. Engine hatch and hinge, that'll be close to last. But we got the uh, the bearings in for the, uh, the pump shaft to reseal all of the stuff. We got the extra supercharger belt, uh, the hinges, and we also have some supercharger oil to swap into the supercharger. So I will get started on supercharger oil first and uh yeah get this thing going all right uh supercharger oil we are gonna grab this and then uh you grab your favorite sucker and uh you know, loosen the bolt and suck out the the previous oil and install the new oil it's just gm supercharger oil actually before i do that i'm gonna cinch this back up and uh, blow this whole area off so there's no dust that gets in it. Now that you're deaf.
They say it's not serviceable, but they have cross hatching right here that allows you to read what the level is. So I guess at one point it was meant to be serviceable, but not sure. Yep, looks like something's coming now. There was a little bit of motor oil in here prior to, so that's why the it's discolored. But as it passes, you'll see that it gets clearer and clearer. All right, so the, uh, the oil that came out of here started turning out pretty milky. So I'm wondering if that's just because it was getting aerated a lot or the last 25 actually us 55 hours of its life have been uh beaten on pretty hard but doesn't matter now because we're replacing it all right so now all of that's out since they send you the exact right amount i should just have to put this in and seal it back up All right, that's done. Now on to the pump shaft bearing rebuild. This thing still spins pretty smooth, but with these bearings, as they spin freer and freer, that's usually an indication that they're getting worn out. <clears throat> So this one was first. And it looks like the exact same thing is right behind it, followed by two of the smaller diameter ones. Actually, before I do any of this, I'm gonna go check a schematic and make sure I know how this comes apart before I pull it apart, so I know how it goes back together. Back together. Okay, so it does look like the two smaller ones go on the back side, then the bearing, and then the two larger ones. So just like this. Well, actually, so two smaller ones on the back side, those are little grease traps, the bearing, and then the forward-facing grease-retaining seals. All right, I'll go remove it now. It is rebuilt, looking good. 
if I can get this thing to focus. Okay, so now I just gotta go back in the boat, like so, and uh, stick the pump shaft back through. All right, there. Pump shaft bearing installed. Just gonna mark that off the list. Wherever the hell it is, right there. And then supercharger oil done. I'll do the belt and the tensioner bearing at the same time, right? Meow. That thing right there. Coming off. So I gotta take this tensioner off, tensioner pulley, and I gotta loosen the tensioner. So I think it's a 14. It is. Oh my god. Oh. Shoot, yeah, the same size wrench. Works on both of them. Not just a hat rack at Kawasaki, I guess. Now I'm gonna beat this bearing out with a socket. Only the most precision tools around this garage. So, GoPro, stop recording. So I cleaned this up just a little bit on the inside so that whenever I press this new bearing in, it'll slide a little bit easier, but it's still pretty oxidized. So hopefully this helps some. And I'm not concerned about lubricating the outside race of the bearing as it's a C-clip that holds this thing in. in there now I just have to install this thing wow that actually worked okay now I'm gonna go put this back on the motor Actually, I'm gonna take this belt off, the OEM belt, and then I'm gonna loop it around the, the bearing carrier that I just replaced or rebuilt, and then I'll put the new belt on here. And the whole reason why I'm putting an extra belt around the pump shaft is because if I'm out in a creek 
and this belt breaks, if I have another belt around the pump shaft right here, that means I don't have to separate the motor from the pump shaft on, while in a creek to get a new belt on my supercharger. It's just there handy and I can slip it forward, cut this off with a set of shears, and then slide it on here after I loosen the tensioner and call it a day. It's uh, kind of strange to have belts on jet skis anyway, but this is, uh, this is what a lot of the guys on the, the Green Hulk forum were saying they do for these Kawasaki Ultras. Which, it makes sense, because, you know, you can't get this belt into the way of the, uh, the pump shaft without separating the two, so. Yep, all right, I'll get started on this. to go on there. Supercharged Jesus Christ, how did they get this on here? This thing is tight. The old belt isn't that much larger than that of the new belt. Like, not even visible to the naked eye. There's no way I would be able to do this in a creek. I would be cussing up a storm. Okay, the tensioner and the belt is installed. The pump shaft bearing is built. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna start on the engine hatch hinge. Come here. Come here, Blake. Up, up. Okay, I'll get started on the hinges now, but I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with this because that looks a little ugly. All right, Blake? So thinking through this, before I get started on the engine hatch hinge, uh, to keep myself from installing the engine hatch and then removing it after I've got it installed correctly, because I still have to do the engine install and uh, the drain plug install right there, we are just going to start with the drain plug and uh, get the rest of the wiring harness installed in the boat. So Ryan's gonna come over in a little bit and we'll get that going. Other than that, we uh, just have to mount the solenoid, drain plug, and the engine hatch hinge, and we should be good to go. Should. And then there'll be room for Austin's boat right there.
Ryan is gonna transfer this onto that and then weld it onto the boat so that it's double thick, so a quarter inch thick, and then tap this so that we have a proper drain plug. All right, so Ryan just left. We uh, were able to get the ECU mounted, the uh, regulator rectifier, pretty much all the wiring harness installed. This pipe, which runs a good bit of the like starter solenoid and all that kind of stuff, some additional uh, wiring for accessories from the extra battery. Installed the extra um, drain plug down there, which I'll show you in the back here in a second and uh, got all of the dash back together. So that's looking pretty good. Got the buttons back in there. Not sure how, uh, how much you can see back there, but yeah. All right. And the drain plug turned out pretty nice. So you just gotta twist this like so. And it's fairly out of the way, so it's not like it's just going to disintegrate upon something hitting it. So if water accumulates in the boat, we just twist that out and we'll call it a day. All right. All that we have left now is to install that motor in this boat and uh, call it a day.
right, so after reinstalling the motor, I realized that this was a, this was a pretty poor design, the way I built this engine hatch latch, uh, where this clasp is, because as I'm trying to put the motor back in, I have to tilt it a whole bunch in order to get it underneath this, which in the scheme of things, it's still pretty easy, but uh, if I were to redo it, I would have bolted this in instead of welded it. I, uh, whenever I welded it in, I thought there would be plenty of space, but clearly that's not the case. So, all right, it's in, it's, uh, it's on the verge of being made it up to the pump shaft, and uh, I'm gonna just finish getting all the intercooler lines connected and uh, get, this, uh, get this back half of the, the boat done. All right, the motor is back in the boat. Uh, took a little longer than I anticipated this this whole video just because waiting for parts and doing miscellaneous stuff but uh you always think that five hours of work is going to equate to 15 minutes of video but sometimes it runs a little longer but uh yeah got everything got everything ran i'm waiting until i have new terminals before i terminate the new battery the, the distribution block looks good the relay panel looking decent it looks pretty busy right here but all this is going to get loomed up and uh, a little bit of wire management is going to make it look pretty decent. But uh, there's quite a lot of wires going on in this boat anyway. And I wanted to redo the wiring to properly support a uh, a real stereo system if I end up doing that. So, uh, yeah, everything's, everything's done so far except for the hatch hinge. The hatch hinges, the gas strut that's going to open the hatch, and the kick panel. So I'll probably do that in a subsequent video. But uh, in this one, I ended up getting the solenoids mounted, the tensioner pulley rebuilt, new belt installed, the pump shaft bearing installed, or reinstalled, rebuilt, um, switch panel built, all the wiring ran, redone, and uh, obviously this stuff. Oh, and uh, maintenance on the engine and whatnot. So uh, a lot of work, but Definitely worth it to not be stuck up a creek. So, all right, that will conclude this video, but not before I sing you the song of my people. Those clampians. All right, uh, I will wrap this up here.